Hey angels, how are we doing? Welcome once again to my channel. This is Evangel Anyamu. How has it been? <laughs> yes, this is the final episode. This is the final episode. <laughs> I mean, I've been having fun telling you my story. I know some people would have, I mean, jo being Georgianas and judges, I don't care really. I mean, I don't really care. This is my life. I lived, yes, some ignorance, maybe less wisdom. <laughs> but I thank God. I mean, I, well, I can't say I thank God I experienced such. I thank God for how far I have grown i mean i thank god for how far i have come because when i see things like that right now at least i'm in the position to advise somebody having passed through that it is not a pleasant one it is not a pleasant experience at all but it helped in shaping me into the woman i have become today it helped in shaping me as to make decisions concerning my relationship my present relationship with creamy creamy oatmeal you know <laughs> So the thing is this, after what happened with the, uh, at the mechanic workshop and then I slept in the woman's house, that is, that, that is in episode 5, and then went back to school, you know, my roommates were asking what happened, what happened, I told them, they now said, oh, I think this is getting too much, know what you would do, is it the right person for you, is this that, is this that, I mean everybody was just giving their suggestion, everybody was just advising, everybody became a relationship coach on my head. <laughs> So, but it's, it, I mean, I'm one person who is very teachable. Yes, I love to get information. I love to be advised. Not that I take every advice or every suggestion, but I love them coming so that it will help me to make an informed decision. So at this time, uh, the time I got to school, we were talking and talking, I was crying, I said I don't even know I mean, what is going to happen. At least I would have loved this relationship to have ended, I mean, how do I put it? Amicably, without all this drama around it. I'm not one person. I don't like dramas. I mean, I don't like dramas in my life. So that was what I was just telling my roommates. And lo and behold, this guy called. By the time he called, I didn't pick. I said, what? I mean, why is he calling? After all the embarrassment, after all the humiliations and all that, why is he calling? I think I'm done and I'm done. Yes, that's what I said. He called and called and called. I didn't take it. He called. I didn't take it. In fact, one of my roommates that was really, really angry <laughs> about what happened picked the call and asked him not to call me again. So he started uh, sending text message, but I wouldn't reply. So the next day, that is like two days after I returned back to school, he came visiting. Yes, I heard my name at the gate. They said, you have a visitor. Obviously, I know he was the one because, I mean, who else will visit me? Nobody was really visiting me. So by the time I got to the gate, he was the one. So he now said, please forgive me. You know, all the rappings, all the lines, all the tunes. <laughs> He was saying, please forgive me. I didn't know what came over me. This is that. You're not at fault. I know, yes, I accused you for what happened to me, but it's really not you. It was me, my anger, and I'm working on it, you know? So he now said, please, you, please help me to work on my anger. It is one part of my life I don't like, and I've been working on it. I just need somebody who will be encouraging me, somebody by my side. If I lose you, I doubt if I'll be able to stay with any other person. You're my life, you're my this, you're my that, you know? <laughs> All those kind of ringing, ringing in the head. So he was talking and talking and talking. At this time, I started pitying him. Yes, that's the simple truth. I will... I think he knows that's my weakness. I started pitying him again. Hmm. This is a relationship I've already told myself that that is, I mean, that's the line. That is the last straw. That is the end end. I mean, it's not going to continue. But look at me now pitying him and considering going back to him. I mean, continuing with this relationship. So, after everything, 
yes on that day we went out and then ed came back to school he dropped me so that's how communication started but i told myself i wasn't going to be going to onicha any longer i'll just stay put in my school if anything he can come and visit but i'm not going to be visiting because a lot of dramas happen each time i go to onicha not on my own side but on his own side with the women with the colleagues and everything i mean he practically feels he's so how do i put it he should be respected he 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 deserves every respect you should respect him to the last even to his colleagues yes because everybody knows he has this bad temperament and they kept quiet i never knew that that's how i mean this he will get these women and at the end of the day they will not stay they will leave him he will start hunting for another one it was one of his colleagues that called me on phone one day and told me that look at the kind of person he is and if i can manage that then it's okay but if i cannot manage it that is not going to work because i now developed a relationship with this lady so she was just telling me but on the back of at the back of my mind at the back of my mind i was saying maybe you're interested in him that's why you're painting him black he's not that bad you know everybody has got their dents everybody has got their dirty aspects of their lives you have yours i have mine he has his maybe because his own is so overt his own is so i mean on the outside because it has to do with anger definitely it, 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 it is not something that he can hide easily but we have our flaws and we hide them and right now we are just thinking oh he's the one that is bad and all that so I felt this lady was really interested in him and maybe it's not working out or maybe he just wants me to get out of the way so that she can enter you know but on another thought I said maybe she's being sincere with me because everything she has said I have seen yes everything she has said I have seen being manipulative, beating, uh, flirting and frolicking with women and all that, you know, all those kind of things. I have seen them all, but I was just saying, I mean, how if I end this relationship now, will I be able to get somebody that is better than he is? This was what was going through my mind. So after back and forth, he will come to school, visit me and all that. So he now said that he knows I, have, I haven't forgiven him because if I have forgiven him, I will be coming to his place like before that I have not forgiven him. That's why I don't want to come. I said, no, I just want to concentrate on my studies. At this time, I was about writing my second MBBS. It's our first professional exam. In the Western Nigeria, they call it first MBBS, but in the East, we call it second MBBS. So I didn't want any distractions or whatsoever so i told myself i wasn't going to see him for any reason i wasn't going to see him now after like two months or three months of that decision he called and said his uh, younger brother was wedding in lagos and everybody wants to see me that i have to be present i said why do they want to see me one <laughs> You have not even said, will you marry me? You know, that question is very, very important. And two, I'm not even considering marrying you. So why do I want to continue that relationship? At that level, I mean, seeing your people, yes, they love me so much. They call me as well. In fact, the time this thing happened, one of his brothers called me and said I should forgive him. That, I mean, he has he has made, learned from his mistake. It will never happen again. But I know this is the way it is. They will call and beg. And at the end of the day, it will still happen. Because that's his person. I mean, you can't change him but my mind was that oh if i'm so good extremely good to him eh, he will change or if i treat him so right he will change or if i serve him like a very submissive person he will change but no people don't just change because of you people change because they want to change or god touches their heart to change not because you want them to change that's the simple truth so i said okay one the brother has already invited me for the wedding and then uh, he called but I told the brother that I'm trying to concentrate on my studies I have exams coming and I don't want to joke with this exam because once you fail it you're failing out of med school so I said I will not be able to come for this um, I will not be able to come for this wedding because when I'm traveling on the road also that time the road was so so bad that Ore road was very bad so he now said, okay, they're going to send me flight tickets and all that. And I said, okay, maybe I could just come in uh, that day and then still go back that day so that I don't have to, I mean, spend so much time in Lagos while I'm supposed to be reading. 
so they sent me the tickets and then i went to lagos and at the wedding everybody was just saying oh wifey you know they would call his name say oh see this person's wife oh, see. i was just in my mind <laughs> for you people's mind whose wife <laughs> So, but the truth is that I had fun. You know me, I love having fun. I had fun at the wedding, seeing people and all that. And when I was coming back to school, oh my God, they loaded me with lots of gifts. The brothers, the ones that came from the US, everybody just got something for me. And I was grateful. I mean, I was very grateful. So I went back to school. Now, I didn't go to his place. Like, maybe it was more than six months. I decided to, I mean, change my mind to visit. So I called him, I was coming, he said, okay, no problem. So I went to his place. By the time I got there in the evening, he said, okay, he wants to go out to get something. He was coming back. Then I was in the house. Like he went out around 6 p.m. 7, he didn't come in. 8, he didn't come in. 9, he didn't come in. 10 p.m. That was when he came in. And at the time he was coming in, he came in with one anti <laughs> He came in with one antique bag bag I don't know whether you know what I mean by antique bag Antique bag means all those advanced ladies. Maybe they will be in their 50s or late 40s. They are not married or maybe single mothers. I don't know or single ladies. I don't really know her story and I didn't bother to even know. So he came in with her and I okay he had his own key because I had already locked the door I was inside he had his own key so he came in with this lady I was just hearing noise I mean in the living room I was wondering what was happening only for me to go out in the living room and then I saw both of them in the act yes you heard me right I saw both of them in the act I couldn't believe what was happening and I said I mean, <laughs> that is the height of it. I have really wanted to, I mean, make him feel good before I leave because oh, I know I was leaving. I know I wasn't going to, I mean, marry him. But I wanted us to, I mean, settle it amicably. I didn't want anybody to say, oh, you disappointed me. Oh, because I have this issue, you ran away and all that. Yes, the issue is enough for somebody to run because the people who came before me definitely ran. So I have to run as well <laughs> because I was just wondering why is he not married? A man at that age, why is he not married? But coming into the relationship and seeing how things played out, I now got the full reason why he is not yet married. Because no woman will want to stay in such. That's the simple truth. Unless the one that maybe she has just looked left and right, the future is no is not going anywhere. Depressed one. <laughs> the future is not bright. The future is not going anywhere. Then he will not. De she will not decide to stay. That's the simple truth. So when I saw them, I was just I just shouted, "What is the meaning of this?" The next, what I heard was, oh, Chi, because he calls me by my native name, oh, Chi, oh, she has taken over me, I am now hard, you know, like a drunk person, they were actually, both of them were, were drunk, so he was saying that she, the woman has taken over him and he cannot do anything about it. I was just saying, it's okay, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I said, this is, I mean, this is what I've been looking for as in a way, escape means now it is presented before me. And thank God I came because if not, I would have been one leg in and I'll bring it out again. One leg in, I will bring it out again. But right now, my two legs have to flee. I mean, <laughs> running and not looking back. So that was how. I just endured it because I didn't know where to go to by 10 p.m. That's the simple truth. But did I sleep? No. Did I think? No. I just cried all through that night. And in the morning, it was around 4.30, I picked my bag. <laughs> in fact, the first of card I saw, I didn't even bother whether it was safe or not. By 5, I was already at the park. In fact, by 6.37, I was already in school. And that was the end of that chapter. <laughs> that was the end of that chapter. His brother, so a uh, few of his cousins that got my, uh, my number then, mm -mm, 
I blocked all of them. I wasn't I wasn't receiving their call. Once I noticed that the ones mm -mm. It was the sister that called me one time. I received her call and I narrated everything I experienced in the brother's hand to her. She said there are enough reason for any woman to run. But can I just I mean give him some time and see if I said he's not changing. You should know your brother for crying out loud. Can you live with such a person? If your brother, maybe it was said that a, a brother could marry a sister, can you marry your brother? That's one question you should ask yourself. And if you're sincere with yourself, you will know that and the answer will be no. So I'm telling you, no, I'm fine. Yes, everybody is saying you're the only one that could live with him. Mm -mm, I don't want to be, I don't want to be married to that man whereby I will be the only one who could tolerate his excesses. Mm -mm, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that for my bright future. <laughs> So guys that was how I left that relationship for good yes for good and since then whether he's married or whether he's not so I don't bother my life I didn't even bother to ask anybody I deleted all that connected me to him relatives friends brothers and sister whatever I deleted it from my life <laughs> and right now i mean if you don't close that dirty chapter you will not be able to write a clean one <laughs> if you don't cancel the dirty chapter you'll not be able to write a clean one and i'm happy i did and i'm happy i'm on a clean slate yes very clean that's the simple truth very clean god compensated me <laughs> knowing that i went through a lot and I endured. So guys, if you have not liked, why not like now? If you have not subscribed, try and subscribe and comment in the comment section. If you were in my position, how would you have handled this? I know a lot of people were saying I would have dumped his uh, crazy whatever things and all that. It's not that easy. A lot of women are still in such a relationship and even took it to the next level and they are complaining and complaining but they can't move. And that is the reason I'm telling this story just to i mean give you an edge of what some women are experiencing i was once there and thank god it happened i mean early in my life during my formation years during the time of learning and all that because if it had happened now i don't know what it would have been like for me but thank god it happened at that at the time it happened and i learned a lot from it so guys take care of you and i will see you later this is the final episode Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate you. Bye.